हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल क्वेस्ट फॉर नॉलेज सो येस टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड फर्स्ट चैप्टर इन इकोनॉमिक्स फर्स्ट चैप्टर नेम इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू माइक्रो इकोनॉमिक्स सो वॉट इज मीन बाई इकोनॉमिक्स इकोनॉमिक्स इज नथिंग बट द स्टडी ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ चॉइस Why do we need to study about the problem of choice? Because resources are scarce and wants are unlimited. We need to study about the problem of choice at the level of individual, social, national, and international level. There is no need to study economics if everything to us is available to uh, available in abundance. Example: We don't any we don't pay any price for the sunshine why because it is available to us in abundance we don't pay any price for ocean because it is available to us in abundance so we pay for those things which are scarce which are limited so economics is the study of problem of choice because resources are scarce and wants are unlimited what is economy economy in general will call it a surrounding so it is the mechanism through which the scarce resources are organized for the production of goods and services okay so economy generally is surrounding okay we'll consider as indian economy american economy it's about the mechanism through which the scarce resources are being allotted the allocation of resources are done for the production of goods and services in economy okay now let's understand what is the central problem of an economy the central every economy has central problem which we need to fulfill we need to find out a solution for this problems one is what to produce in what quantity this discuss about the problem of choice second how to produce this discuss about the problem of technology whom to produce this discuss about the problem of distribution this is a very important four marks question okay what to produce discuss about the problem of choice as every individual cannot produce everything okay whatever i want i cannot i cannot produce everything which i i need so what is whatever the resources and technology available to me based on that i will make the decision what i can produce in what quantity okay so what to produce discuss about the problem of choice how to produce discuss about the problem of technology there are two techniques of production whether i should hire more labor and less capital uh, or whether i should have more labor more capital and less labor whether i should have labor intensive if i have labor intensive i can give more employment opportunities if i have capital intensive i can adapt more better technology modern machineries etc third is whom to produce this discuss about the problem of distribution to whom i'm going to produce the product to religion to region the products may vary to rich to poor the products may vary is as per the need of the consumer i have to purchase the i have to produce the goods or service so to whom am i going to produce this is based on the problem of distribution what is economic activity economic activity is when you produce any goods or service and after that you distribute it so distributed distribution can be done wholesaling retailing and uh, nowadays we have online platforms so where a buyer can meet the seller and seller can meet the buyer through is that is distribution making the consumer aware of the product price of the product where its availability till when its availability so that is distribution that is final usage will call it as consumption when a person is consuming finally purchasing that product in order to use that its consumption 
so that while if you want to consume it you have to pay a price in exchange so that is exchange even if you buy a pen also you have to pay a price for this a 10 rupee for this that is exchange so it has been produced it has been distributed and it has been consumed and it has been consumed after paying a price for it is called as exchange so this all is economic activity now we'll understand what is the difference between micro and macro economics micro means small macro means overall that is whole aggregate micro study about individual behavior macro ag- studies about the aggregate or the whole economic behavior demand and individual demand and supply are main tool in microeconomics here we'll study about the overall aggregate demand and aggregate supply it discuss about price pro- factor of production like labor capital it discuss about overall income and overall employment etc microeconomics is also called as microscopic view in microscope we can have a detailed look of every tiny particles okay A- any small things also tiny things also we can have a detailed view so that is micro So that is why it has microscopic view and birds eye view so we have a overall information we try to collect overall information we try to t- collect uh, discuss overall topic so that is why it is called as birds eye view after this we have difference between positive and normative this is important to mark okay what is positive economics is that when it discuss about the function of mechanism it is positive when it discuss on the evaluation of the function of the mechanism whether it is favorable to the society or not desirable to the economy or not so that is normative economics that is why when we have norm norm means rule norm means ethics so it is bit ethics we should have in our economy it focus on what it is and what it was because it is result oriented ke dekho ye kya tha kya ho gaya kya se kaha ho gaya okay kahan se kahan tak hum pahunch gaye these are all the based on result oriented this is ye kya hona chahiye kya ho gaya it's focus on the ethics what ought to be done what should to be done this is descriptive in nature this is prescriptive in nature so this is the difference between positive no- economics and normative ex- economics example cigarette if you take if you look into the perspective of positive economics the production of cigarettes they pay hefty tax to the government government is happy uh, people are happy but when you take it into the perspective of normative economics when you see whether it is favorable to the society or not no it is not favorable to the society even teenagers are getting addicted to smoking people are getting affected uh, to the diseases like respiratory problems lungs cancer etc so when you see the same thing into the perspective of positive it looks good but the same thing if you look into the perspective of uh, normative it doesn't look favorable to the economy in the long term okay so that is what difference between positive and normative now we'll understand what is simple economy देखो हर एक इंडिविजुअल जो है इकोनॉमी में बिजी है विद द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ गुड्स और सर्विस गुड्स मींस एनी मटेरियल व्हिच इज व्हिच वी कैन टच व्हिच वी कैन सी दैट इज गुड्स व्हिच वी कैन नॉट सी बट वी कैन फील दैट आर सर्विसेज ओके एवरी इंडिविजुअल इन द इकोनॉमी इज बिजी विद द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ गुड्स और सर्विसेज इन ऑर्डर टू अर्न मनी एंड मीट हिज नीड्स बट वी कैन नॉट प्रोड्यूस एवरीथिंग व्हाट एवर वी नीड बिकॉज़ रिसोर्सेज आर स्केर्स एंड वांट्स are unlimited so we will produce with whatever the techniques and resources available to us and exchange it in society in order to earn money and meet our other needs example like a farmer weaver and a teacher a farmer may have certain plots certain ox bull or some rice and based on that he will produce rice some he'll keep it for himself and rest he will exchange it in society in order to earn money same with the weaver weaver will also have some yarn wool etc from out of that he'll making some cloth cotton or into cloth and that he will sell it in the society some he'll keep it for himself rest he will exchange it in the society and he will meet the other needs 
okay similarly a teacher will use her skill her service in order to earn money and meet her other needs like um, paying rent buying provision paying school fees etc so this is called as simple economy so there are various types of economies in in the world many country follow different different types of economy so we'll understand what are the various types of economy first is centrally planned economy so centrally planned economy is also called as socialistic economy socialistic economy why because all major decisions are being taken by the government regarding economic activities like production consumption distribution exchange all major economic activities decisions are being made by the government and service is their primary motive they want to look for the welfare of the people well being of the people prosperity of the people so service is their primary motive and government will always intervene on situation so that he can promote equal distribution of income and wealth example china and north korea are the example of centrally planned economy now these are all very important question if you write this much of points also easily you will get four marks okay whatever i have written are very very uh, important uh, answers it can be proved to be a very important answers for you to attempt for your exams so make a note out of it so that it will be very easy for you not only to understand but also it will be like your you will get fully prepared or uh, fully well known with your first chapter okay market economy it is also called as capitalistic economy government will play minimum role here like defense and uh, in the necessity only the government will intervene or else all the major decisions are being taken by the market that is why it is called as market economy and uh, it it is economy works under the mechanism of demand and supply and price signals so based on the price there is exchange between the producers and consumers so everything is dependent on price signals and they are profit oriented their main motive is profit example are usa japan are the best examples of market economy lastly we have mixed economy mixed economy is the mixture of both socialistic and market economy and india is the best example of mixed economy because when we got independent neither we can leave the country on the uh, on market because majority of them were poor and the government role was very important so that they can look for the downtrodden and the weaker section of the society so we wanted both the goodness both the prawns we want to adapt so that we are have the mixture of both capitalistic and socialistic economy okay so these all are the various type of economies now let's discuss the last few uh, topics the next topic we have is opportunity cost so in economics resources are scarce and wants are limited and we need to make a choice so that is why we have opportunity cost which is next best alternative for gon see for every uh, actor we have various various uh punch dialogues so in economics also we have various punch dialogues like opportunity cost punch dialogue is next best alternative for gone so in order to produce that good the next alternative you sacrificed will be called as opportunity cost example mr a has 5000 rupee and he has two options like one he can invest in his family business and the another he can invest in shares which can reap him good profit but he chose to invest in his family business and sacrificed the next alternative of reaping profit by investment in shares so the next best alternative which you forgone is called as opportunity cost a very easy example is that before coming 
after 10th standard you had many options whether you want to go into the science stream or commerce streams or art streams but and you chose commerce stream and you sacrificed the arts and science stream so that uh, so that next best alternative which you sacrificed is called as opportunity cost now we have production possibility frontier production possibility so the possible production can be done and the combination of the possible production which can be done with the available resources and technology is called as production possibility set okay for example here what are the various possible is that because resources are scarce resources are very limited and our needs are unlimited so based on to that what happens if you produce something maximum you cannot produce the other product maximum so in order to produce one thing maximum you have to sacrifice if you are producing this bit if you are want to produce this in a two units then you have to reduce from 10 to 7 if you want to produce this 3 then you have to produce this 4 if you want to produce this maximum then you cannot produce cotton you cannot produce so based on to this when you are producing cotton maximum you are not able to produce corn and when you are producing corn maximum you cannot able to produce cotton so that is this called as production possibility curve and lastly we have it is a curve which depicts possible combination of two goods which economy can produce is called as production possibility frontier. Frontier is nothing but the curve which shows the possible combination of two goods which economy can produce. If one good is produced maximum then other commodity has to be produced nil or minimum so resources are scarce we need to make choice and with the help of ppf we can easily allocate the resources and uh, we can fully utilize the available resources and technology i hope you are clear if you have any doubts you can comment and ask i will surely reply and answer you and try to clear your doubts and if I need to make any other improvements in my explanation, do suggest me that in, uh, in the comment box. And if you found this video really helpful, uh, and then do like, share, subscribe and do support to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.